Hello YouTube! Welcome to the second part of our Next.js tutorial. If you remember last week we talked about routing, this week we are going to talk about data fetching. And for that, I already created this mock server with some vehicles, owners and details for us to use. Jumping into code, we can see that these owners is the data we are using at the moment. Completely hard-coded, right? So let's start by deleting that one and replacing this bit by a snippet that you may be familiar in React. So use state, use effect, and using fetch to fetch data from the server. And instead of fetch, you can use um, Axios or super agent. It will just work, okay? You can also use SWR, and I will leave a link in the description to a video in the channel about SWR that will make this snippet much simpler. But moving forward and going to our browser, you may see that now we will have five elements there. So you probably are thinking, well, it worked. We did server-side rendering, right? Well, not quite. What happened was that our browser did the fetch and showed that. But what we received from our server-side is just an empty page. We didn't do the HTTP call in server-side. And why that happened? Well, use effect will not run in server-side in Next.js because Next.js renders the, the page one time and sends it immediately to our browser. And use effect will run in the next time frame. So it's gone. This code will not even run in server-side. The highlighted code is not even running server-side. So in order for us to solve that, luckily, Next.js developers uh, created something called get initial props and that get initial props works the following way we pass get initial props equals to a function okay and whatever we return in this function let's say that we return owners list okay and in this owners list we have owner name bruno for example okay so whatever we return here it will be passed as a property in our component here so we can have owners list and now we can pass owners list over here we can comment this code because we don't need that anymore okay and because we are passing owners list here we are receiving owners list over there it will just work even though we are not doing the http call but we have that over there going to the inspect we can see that our server rendered already with that details so now what we need to do is make this one async okay and we can even copy this code over here okay we copy we remove that bit so we don't need and we can use this owners list and pass it over there and because this is an async function what next.js is doing is checking that you have get initial props it checks that it receives a promise it waits for that promise to be resolved. When that promise is resolved, it picks whatever we are returning here, passes it as properties to our component. Our component renders once, Next.js picks that HTML and sends to our client. So going back here now and refreshing, okay? We should see that in our list, we also have everything server-side rendered. So that's exactly what we were looking for in the first place, right? But when we click here now and we go to the second page, well, we need to probably do something really similar to this page. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just copy this bit, okay? Just to make it easier for us and faster. We can come here and do copy of that and copy person. And now our person will also receive a owner's list. Okay, and just to prove you that, let me just do this. Return pre of uh, json.stringify. Okay, let's do, oops, not person's list, but owner's list. And probably we should change this name in the future, but for the demo, it's probably good enough. So having this owner's list and going back, literally the second page will look the same as our first page, right? Um, so yeah, it looks now exactly the same, but that's not what we want. We want now to filter by, for example, the second name, okay? Or the car. Let's go by the, the name first and then we will add car in a second. So if we jump to my mock server, the way that my mock server filters things is we pass the property we want and then we pass what we want to filter. 
So let's do exactly this in our code. And we will come here and we will do owner name, oops, it will be capitalized, equals to. And now you are asking, well, but how can I get that router over there? Because the router is in a different function. Well, luckily, Next.js provides us with a context, okay? And this context, one of the things inside context is a query, okay? So we can do context.query, or if you prefer, we can do like that. Whatever you prefer, both work. So let's copy this query and do query.person, okay? If you didn't watch um, the video from last week, this person name is coming directly from this file name over here. So that thing means that we have a dynamic route with a dynamic parameter, and I'm using that dynamic parameter over there, okay? So let's go back to our browser. And if we go to our application and we do enter, I should now see only two. And yes, I'm seeing only two. Okay, so the next thing is we can also filter by the vehicle. So we can do um, plus and vehicle equals to query dot vehicle. Okay, and now going back to our browser, we should only see one after we refresh. We should see only one because we are filtering by the vehicle and the person's name. So we can grab details. Okay, let's do that. Let's, or let's just keep it as stringify. Now let's, let's do that. Okay, so let's do owners. Okay, so owners list. Let's grab the first one and put details. So now what we care about is only the details. Okay, so some detail about Bruno's car. If we go back and we navigate to, for example, Elon Musk, we have some detail about Elon Musk. So everything seems to be working. So before we wrap it up, there are some things that I should, you, should warn you about before you just move on and start to do this a lot. So the first thing is, let's say that our server, instead of replying in 100 milliseconds, it will reply in three seconds, for example. Let me just kill my mock server, okay? So let me just kill the mock server and restart it. And now every single call will take at least three seconds to run. So, oops, where is my browser? Is over here, okay? And going back, you will see that we are not going back until our HTTP call is not finished, okay? Clicking again. The HTTP call was performed, is pending. When that pending moves to a 200, then yes, we navigate. If you are okay with this behavior, you can close the video, you are good to go, and that's it. If you care about that behavior and that behavior is not what you want and you want to navigate directly and only after you navigate you perform the HTTP call, then Next.js provides um, inside the context a thing called request and response. So let me do this, get initial props. And in the get initial props, we have the context, okay? And this is the CTX uh, that we are using. And the two properties we can use is rec and res from request and response. And they will only be available server time. So if we are running in the client, those two will become undefined, I guess, right? So we can come here and use that one and say something on these lines. If context.request, for example, oops, if it's not defined, okay, we can just do return owner's list of empty, okay? And we just do that, okay? So, oops, I need to pass an object. <laughs> okay, one more typo, Bruno, and now it should be fine, right? So now we are returning just an empty list. So what will happen is if we are in client side, instead of executing the codes and the call before we navigate to the next page, we just navigate and then we can use a similar code to what we had before with the use state, use effect and fetch in order to fetch in client side. So before we do that, let's just move to our browser, go back and check that from the list to the details now, we can just navigate quite fast, okay? So we just navigated quite fast. It will fail because we don't have a zero and so it will fail. It's fine for now. 
So what we can do? We can do exactly what we were doing in the list. And thank God we didn't delete the comment. So we can just copy paste that one, right? And now uncomment, let's just uncomment that one, okay? And we can say that the initial thing will be this one, okay? And now what we can do is the same thing we have over there. So let's just copy this one. The only difference is that this time, let me just copy this first and then I will talk. Okay, so the only difference is that now we need to put router.query and router.query, okay? And we can do the opposite validation over here, which is if, oops, if uh, the owner's list, the owner's list is already defined, okay? Or at least if the length, uh, the length of the owner's list is bigger than zero, for example, we just return or we do the opposite. If it's equals to zero, we execute, okay? One of the two. So <laughs> it doesn't matter which one you do. Um, you just, if the list is empty, you execute the HTTP call. If the list is already provided to you, you just don't do the HTTP call. And that's perfect, I would say. So going back to our browser, let's see what's happening here. Ah, it's still the same error because we didn't do anything about this one. So we can do this one and, oops, over there like that, because Next.js already supports that out of the box, even though we are not using TypeScript, the bubble plugins already support that, okay? So we can just refresh and everything should just work now. And we need to import use state because we are not importing use state. Good job, Bruno. <laughs> so use state and use effect from React. Okay, now we should be good to go. Going back, okay, and clicking there. Okay, we have something. At least it's not exploding, okay? J let me just confirm something and, oops, we should be using owners here and not owners list. So now, yes, now everything should be fine. Let me just test everything again. And this one should just work as expected, right? But going back, we'll take the three seconds because our mock server is still on the three seconds. But clicking on this one, initially it shows nothing. But after the three seconds, we now have that. We can even start to have things like, oh, if, um, for example, if um, owners of zero is not defined, okay, return div loading, for example. We can even start to do things like that, but it's not for this data fetching tutorial. So we can have things like that, right? Um, and that's literally everything you need to know in order to play with Next.js. You can see that the loading disappears and now we have that. So next week, we will start to play a bit with TypeScript moving all this application to TypeScript. After that, I will show you how to do API calls inside Next.js because at the moment I'm using my mock server, okay, this one in localhost 4001, but Next.js itself can be used as an API, okay? So we can have API endpoints being provided from Next.js. We will do that. And after those two, we will do a full example where we merge everything we are learning. So we will use the basic routing we already learned. We will use these HTTP calls. And in that last one, I will also show you a bit more detail about the routing and some methods that exist in the routing we can call through code, okay? So if you are enjoying this series, please subscribe to the channel to receive the next notifications. Like the video if you liked it. And I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.